Hello and welcome to another episode of Food Tech 101. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quiche. Now a quiche is a bit like a, a flan with a filling made predominantly of egg and the egg is used to set the mixture using a process called coagulation. We don't really need to know about that. What we need to know is that it's really tasty. And for my particular quiche, I'm going to have the filling of broccoli with onions and some cheese. Now it's a good way to get uh, vegetables in there because even if you don't really love the taste of vegetables, I do, but even if you don't, then it can be incorporated into this dish in such a way that it's just tasty. You don't really think about it as, oh, I'm getting my greens in, or I'm getting my onions in, or I'm getting my lettuce, or whatever it is you put in it. You can put whatever ingredients you want, but it's a good way to try and get some, some veg in there as well. So, let's get started. There are mainly the two parts to the making of a quiche. One, the pastry, which we'll go through first, and secondly, the filling. 75 mils of milk, a teaspoonful of salt and a pinch of pepper, two eggs, 75 grams of cheese, 100 grams of broccoli, 50 grams of onion, 150 grams of plain flour, 75 grams of butter. In my bowl, we have some flour and some butter. And we're gonna mix them two together using a method called the rubbing in method. That's where we use our fingertips to squeeze the fat in with the flour until it resembles or looks like fine breadcrumbs. So let's get started. Just grab the butter and squeeze it into the flour. Try and use just the fingertips. They say a tip would be to use the fingertips because the fingertips are the coolest part of the hand. And we don't want our butter to melt because if it melts, it's going to change the consistency of our shortcrust pastry because the fat will form a bit more like an oil and we need to stay quite solid. What we're actually doing when we're making shortcrust pastry is that we're using the fat to coat each individual grain or particle of flour. Now what this does is that when we add our water to bind the ingredients together, the fat surrounds each bit of flour and creates a bit of a barrier, preventing gluten strands from forming. That's why it's called short. So because the fat surrounds the flour, gluten is not able to form because gluten is mixing, is when you mix flour with water, the protein of flour, there's two proteins, one's called glu glutenin, one's called gliadin, they mix together and form this stretchy substance called gluten which is fine for bread because we need it to stretch when it's rising in the oven. But when we're making pastry, we don't want it to stretch because if it stretches, it's gonna make the pastry tough. What we want is something what we call a short pastry so that the gluten, for, the gluten strands aren't formed. So the, the substance or the pastry that follows is crumbly. Now, we don't want a crumbly bread that just breaks apart in the mouth, but we do want a crumbly pastry. And that's where it gets its name short from. Because the fat, the high ratio of fat, almost half fat to flour, prevents gluten from forming long strands. So into my mixture, I'm going to put about a teaspoonful of cinnamon. Maybe half a teaspoonful. going to give that a bit of a mix through. So we have our dry ingredients. It's not much of a pastry yet because to do that we need the water to bind our ingredients together. Now it's important we don't add too much water here. We need just enough to bind the mixture together to form a dough but not so much. Um, if we add too much water then our pastry is going to become a bit hard and tough. So I'm going to go for about two spoonfuls of water to begin with. Give it a bit of a mix and see what kind of consistency we have. So one, two. Give it a little bit of a mix. And really what I'm looking for is, I'm not trying to knead, I'm just gonna see if that's enough water to bind the ingredients together. I'm gonna need a touch more. 
about half a spoonful more. And it's important that we're not kneading. I'm just trying to gather all the ingredients together so it forms a nice dough. Incidentally, the same process of making our pastry for our quiche is almost the same process, virtually the same, well, to say identical, to making paste, shortcut pastry for any other dish that requires it. There we have our pastry dough ball. Now we need to roll it out. Okay, so we've got our shortcut pastry dough. What we need to do now is roll it out. It's important each time you roll to roll and move around. A rolling tip. Roll from the center, forwards, center back. Not right over the edges, right over the edges. Because what this tends to do is thin out the edges so the edges end up being thinner than the rest of the mixture, which gives you an inconsistent mixture. Which means if it's an inconsistent mixture, it's going to be inconsistent baking time. So we don't really want that. Thickness wise, say about a thickness of a pound coin, there or thereabouts. But in particular size wise, it needs to be able to be around the tin, but with maybe a two, uh, two inch border to accommodate for the thickness of our flan dish. Okay, a little tip. Uh, use your rolling pin to roll it up. So we've got our pastry ready and rolled out. Slide it on our tin, and let's just roll this over the top. Okay. Now, while I'm doing this, it gives me an opportunity to tell you about something called blind baking. Now, what is blind baking? That's a question. Let me see if we can find the answer for you. Blind baking. Now, you don't always have to do it. I don't always do it. If I was making this particular dish for myself, I don't think I would bother with blind baking. Um, but for the perfect results, if you have the patience, is the blind baking. Now, why do we, what is blind baking and why do we blind and bake? Now, blind baking is a term which means um, we're going to pre-bake our pastry before we put our filling in. The question is why? Sometimes when you're making, making dishes that have a particularly wet content or high water content, then when you put the, the, the liquid or the mixture inside the pastry and you bake it, the contact point between the mixture and the pastry can sometimes be a little bit soggy because that's the part that's harder to bake and you have a little bit of a, a soggy base, perhaps at times. Now this is a quite a high fat pastry, it's half fat to flour, short crust pastry, um, but even so, um, this is quite a wet filling, a, a flan. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blind bake it and that'll give me a little bit of time. So while it's blind baking, I'll just quickly prepare uh, the wet ingredients or talk through the wet ingredients for my flan. So I've got quite a bit of grist uh, of paper. Open it up a little bit. Stick it in. Move it to the top. And then align it with take the lid off first. Line it with these. Now the reason why we line it when we're blind baking it, because if you don't line it, then the, the, the base has a tendency to rise up. This keeps our base nice and flat. So we have our pastry there. Pop this in the oven, come back in about 10 minutes. The next stage is to make our filling. I've got 75 mils of milk into that. I'm gonna crack two eggs. Add a pinch of salt and pepper. And give it a mix. Okay, I paste it out of the oven. Now, the thing with this, we're not allowed it to bake completely. We don't want it to bake completely because if it bakes completely, when it goes back in the oven with the filling, then the pastry, the pastry itself may start to burn and we don't really want that. So we've kind of half baked it a little bit to get it going. Just gonna trim off the edge. Now, 
Now, if you're watching this and you're one of my students, then in class we probably will not blind bake this because we don't have time within one lesson to, to blind bake. But just to let you know what blind baking is. So we've kind of half baked our, our, our pastry, not fully baked because it is going to go in the oven again. Now what we're going to do is just add in our ingredients, our filling. Now your filling can be whatever you want it to be. For my filling, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to have some broccoli because I want to, want to really get my greens in. This is a tasty way of doing it. So I'm going to sprinkle my broccoli in. Into that, I'm going to, of course, my onions. I'm going to sprinkle my onions in. I mean, into this you can really put whatever, whatever you really want. But I think this is a really good way, a tasty way as well, of getting lots of vegetables. You could use some cauliflower, you could use some kale, you could use whatever greens you like, mushrooms as well, whatever greens you like, or even whatever greens you don't like. You'd be surprised. Once they're in, in this kind of dish, it works quite well. So I've got my onions and my broccoli in there. And finally, I'm just going to sprinkle over my cheese. Now for this dish, I've used vegan cheese, but you can use whatever cheese you desire. I mean, already it's really looking quite pretty. Now, for the egg. Now the purpose of the egg in this particular dish is twofold. One, it is partly for the taste. And secondarily, it is to help bind all these ingredients together. I'm gonna to pour it over in that kind of way to make sure that I'm covering all the vegetables because this is like the glue that's going to set and bind everything together. So I want to make sure it covers it properly. Okay, there's our filling. So now I'm going to bang this in the oven for about 20 minutes. And here's our quiche out of the oven. As you can see, it's browned nice around the outside. The base, very well done. No leakage, it's not damp at all. Let's cut it open and see what it's like inside. Oh, that looks fantastic. Set perfectly. See the pretty colors of the green with the onions, the smell is amazing. Cooked all the way through, crisp and crumbly, absolutely perfect. It smells delicious, but as always, the proof is in the eating. So just for the sake of science, let's take a taste. Nice big bit of broccoli here. Oh. Green rest of the cheese. And because we didn't cook the broccoli before, it's still got a bit of crunch on it as well, that's nice. Our pastry is well cooked, and the onions give it a nice savoury flavour all the way through. A simple, tasty, quick, easy to make dish. And it's a good opportunity to be able to get more veg in as well. When you put a little bit of cheese on top, you put the egg filling over the top to bind everything together. Um, you really forget even the fact that you're actually eating vegetables. So it's a good way to put in whatever vegetables you like. Peppers, broccoli, get some cabbage in there, different types of greens, mushrooms. Once you put it all in, a bit like a pizza in a way, like a pizza, almost like a pizza pie. So you can really use this as an opportunity to get all the vegetables in that you really like to get in. Mm. Really good. So there we have it, nice, tasty, quick, easy, vegetable packed quiche. And you can really put in it whatever you like. So thanks for watching Food Tech 101. Food Tech 101 is now available on Facebook and Instagram. You can also contact us via email at admin at foodtech101.co.uk. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit a little bell icon so you never miss another video again. As always, my name is Mr. Lybird. For you, you can call me sir.